Hi, I'm Anne. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be wrapping up the rest of the books that I read in January, as well as my TBR for February. Let's go. So since I did my part one of my wrap up for January, I ended up only reading four more books. So I decided instead of just doing a dedicated uh, part two of the wrap up, I decided to combine both the rest of the books that I read, as well as the books that I plan to read in February. I also wanted to break down some of the stats of the books that I've been reading recently from my physical TBR because that is my big reading goal for 2023 is to eliminate my physical TBR. So a week or so ago, I did a uh, mid month type wrap up for this month. And I had 17 books on that list, uh, which if you add 17 and four, uh, that means I read a total of 21 books in January. I'm a little bit shook and I think 13 of those were from my physical TBR. Now I had quite a few books that I received for Christmas that I also ended up reading. Um, and so that definitely, um, decreased how many books from my physical TBR I could read. Uh, but I also feel very, very good about all the books that I read. You know, there were definitely some duds. There were some classics I had controversial opinions on. Um, you can see my wrap up part one for all those controversial opinions. Um, but for the most part, I enjoyed what I read. So let's get into the four books that I read this month since my last reading wrap up. So the first one I read was The Importance of Living by Lin Yu Tong. So as far as I know, Lin Yu Tong is a Chinese translator. He translated quite a few very big and complex Chinese classics into English. So as someone who cannot read Chinese that well and who loves Chinese classics, I appreciate people like him who can translate. But so this book though is a philosophy of understanding life. And yeah, the importance of living, I guess it's in the title. Lin's writing is just interesting because he has almost this sarcastic, snarky sense of humor. Um, I believe he wrote this book, I think this one was published in the 50s or the 60s. Hmm. Oh, actually, it is older than I thought. This is actually published in 1937. Um, so it's funny because he has a deep understanding of like more of an English culture, a lot of the Western um, philosophers, but he's also originally from China. So he has a lot of the understanding of more of Eastern uh, philosophy traditions. So he kind of meshes the two. And so it's a very, very fascinating book to read um, because just his opinions. And I won't say I definitely agree with all of his opinions, but he was a really, in, this was a really interesting book to read. Um, I gave it three out of five stars because certain of his opinions I just didn't agree with. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. The next book uh, does not need an introduction. The next book is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Dumas, as someone commented in my comment section, it's supposed to be Dumas, not Dumas. But I did a full uh, wrap up in this in I think my latest video. So I will link that down in the description for my full thoughts. But I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It's a beautiful book. It is a lot to tackle being 1200 pages, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. All right, the next book I finished is uh, Space Paw by Gordon R. Dixon. The only book I've read by him is I think called The Horde and it is one of my favorite sci-fi books that I've re ever read. And so I picked up this book um, from like this thrift bookstore. I think I got it for like a dollar um, because I wanted to read more of his books to see if maybe it was just that one that I really loved and, or maybe I really love his writing. Um, and this one, like it wasn't the best. I ended up giving it four out of five stars, but it was a ride. It follows uh, Bill, can't remember his full name, Bill Watham. He is this uh, engineer who is sent on this mission to this planet of Dilbia, which is inhabited by these kind of giant bear people. I think they're described as being like eight or nine feet tall. Uh, they are more tribal. Um, they're not as advanced as say, space traveling humans are in this world. Um, but he, so he goes there to teach them agriculture techniques. And he, when he arrives, he finds that all his human contacts are not there. Uh, one has been taken off planet after like a being hurt and the other one has been kidnapped or something by some of the Dilbian people. <laughs> and so he ends up going on this crazy adventure, meeting these 
crazy individuals. I will say it's only a little bit over 200 pages. So the development of the science and the world and a lot of the characters just isn't there because you can't really develop characters that well in like 200 pages. Um, but the humor and just the funny adventure scenes were just great, especially since I fit read this after finishing The Count of Monte Cristo. So it's kind of like the vast opposite because of how short it is and how light it is compared to a lot of the dense themes that are discussed in The Count of Monte Cristo. So it was exactly what I needed when I read it. And it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And the last book that I read in January I actually received for my birthday and that is The Aztecs, A New Interpretation or something or An Interpretation by Inga Clinton. Uh, this one was interesting. This one was not at all was I, what I was expecting. Um, I was expecting much more of like an overview on Aztec culture, but instead it really gets into the nitty gritty of understanding the society that was the Aztecs. So for example, one of the chapters, and I'm sure I'm going to butcher the capital, um, Tenochtitlan or something like that. Tenochtitlan? Plan. I don't know. Um, but the capital city, like one chapter is just describing exactly the layout of the capital city, kind of socially, uh, who lived there and things like that. And I absolutely loved it because it didn't just seek to understand the uh, Aztec people at the time when uh, the Spaniards invaded their territory. Instead, it sets out to more understand who exactly were the Aztec people, why they did what they did, um, their religions, their, their motivations, their way of understanding the world. It was fascinating. Uh, however, the, the, I, I, I struggled with this and I really struggle with how a lot of people don't seem to realize that because yes, we seem to be under the apprehension that the Spaniards invading South America was the reason why so many of these people, this civilization, not only this civilization, but others south, south of it um, were eliminated kind of. But this book never once mentions the diseases that the Spaniards brought to South America, which was the main cause of death among the Aztecs because I personally think, yes, I know the Spaniards had like guns and technology that the Aztecs didn't have, but the Aztecs were in much larger numbers than the Spaniards. And I personally think they could have taken them on, I'm just saying, um, if the Spaniards had not brought pathogens that the Aztecs couldn't exactly fight against. Um, so that was never mentioned in this book, which definitely downgraded it like a star for me because I'm like, at least mention that because I find that to be a very fascinating topic. So I get, ended up giving it three out of five stars, but still the descriptions of the civilization and their religion and the different like gods. Oh my gosh, they even have like a, uh, like a couple different pages at the end. Like one is a seasonal calendar at, at the Aztec seasonal calendar, which was very cool. And then they have a uh, Aztec pantheon that talks about the gods. Oh, I loved it. Um, but yeah, just some of the things I thought could have been handled better, but I see myself if I write a book that happens to be set around the Aztecs, this is a book that will be um, a uh, definitely a source for me to pull from. All right, so those are all the books that I finished in January. Now let's get to some of the stats of all the books that I read. So I so I started off this um, challenge of reading my entire physical TBR in 2023, actually in November, but I wasn't seriously doing the uh, challenge at all. So like the first month I read a total of six books um, and the second month I only read a total of seven books. Um, so I didn't read that many. And on average, I should be reading about 11 books for my physical TBR per month to get all the books done by the end of 2023. But let's look at the stats of January specifically. So I started with 122 books. Um, I started this challenge with 136 and uh, I started January with 122 books and a total of 55,031 pages to read. And I thought it was important for me to take account of the pages because some of the books that I have are like 100 pages and that would be a lot quicker book to read than say a 500 to 1,000 page book like uh, the case of The Count of Monte Cristo. So um, I read a total of 13 books for my physical TBR this month, which takes my total from 120 
oh no, 123, not 122. Uh, from 123 down to 110. So I'm really near to the 100 mark and I would love to get my physical TBR by the end of February down below 100. That would be amazing. So I read a total of 3,904 pages from my physical TBR uh, in January, which is very exciting. And so my total page count now at the beginning of February is 51,100. 27 pages. So I start the beginning of February with 110 books to read. So let's see how many books I can read this month. So let's get to the books that I am currently reading. And the first two are actually from my physical TBR. The first one is The Betrothed by Alessandro uh, Manzoni. Uh, this book I was actually hoping to finish today, but I think I'm going to get it done tomorrow, which is fine. Um, and this is the book that I picked for Around the World in 80 Days Readathon that I am hosting. I am co-hosting and this one is in Italy, of course, um, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I should be done with it soon. The second book I am in the middle of reading is The Black Stallion by Walter Farley. This book is exceptional and I have not read a like middle grade book in a while, but every time I read them, I enjoy them. I should be reading more middle grade books because they make me happy and they're very light reads. Like I started this this morning and I'm already almost 100 pages in. I'm almost halfway done with it already. So I should be finishing that next. And so those two books are from my physical TBR. The next book I'm reading is The Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton. This is a uh, Catholic biography. Um, Thomas Merton is a Trappist uh, monk. So Trappists are just a certain like de denomination of religious order, similar to like the Franciscans or the Dominicans. So the books that I need to read in February are uh, most of the books that I got for my birthday. And I'm planning to read all of these. Um, however, uh, some of my friends decided to give me more books for my birthday, which I appreciate, but that means more books to read. So I may end up uh, putting some of these over into March because it's not really fair to myself to, uh, because I didn't really plan to have this many books um, for myself to say, oh yeah, you, you failed because yeah, you just didn't finish these books. But that just means I probably won't buy any books until after March. So the books I had in my uh, birthday TBR that my birthday book haul that I have not read yet. I have The Hero of Our Time um, by Mikhail Lermontov. And that one uh, is a relatively short book, so I'm hoping to finish it quickly. Lost Illusions by Balzac. Uh, I am hoping to read this also semi quickly. I have the Mounty, the Bounty Trilogy um, by Nordhoff and Hall, I don't remember their full names, um, but that's Mutiny on the Bo Bounty, Men Against the Sea, and Pitcairn's Island. So I have those three to read. This will probably be the most challenging to read um, because, yeah, they're they're rather long. Uh, and then The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William L. Schur. Uh, this one, again, will be a rather long one, but I probably won't in detail read this. I will probably be skimming a little bit of this, so hopefully it goes rather quick. And then the books that I got from my friends for my birthday, which were not featured in my book haul, and that was The Godfather by Mario Puzo. This is one of my friend's favorite books. And he was like, you need to try to read this. This is a book I would never have read on my own, um, because I don't really like mobster stories all that much. Um, so we will see if I enjoy this. Uh, and then I have these massive two classics to Anne Rand. I have The Fountainhead and I have Atlas Shrugged. Atlas Shrugged is a lot longer than The Fountainhead. So hopefully I can finish these all relatively soon, but I am going to get them on audiobooks, So that should help me move through them quicker. Then I have Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Ho Owens, which is a book that I swore myself to my, I swore to myself that I would never read because Delia Owens and the controversy of her possibly being involved in a murder like I just don't want to support that weirdness um but I received it as a gift so I'll probably read it anyway uh, and hope, maybe I'll like it maybe who knows who knows maybe I'll love it and it'll be my new favorite book and then uh, another of my friends she loves this series she gave me The Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. I tried to read this last year two years ago, uh, and I couldn't get into it. I ended up DNFing it relatively early in the book, so I want to give it another chance, especially since now I own the first book, uh, and she will let me borrow the rest. So I, I need to be in a certain mood to read this type of book and actually enjoy it. I realize that because it's kind of like 
a little bit trashy YA romance fantasy. And I have to realize that going into it, that I need to be in the mood to read like trashy romance kind of. So uh, yeah, so those are the books that are I received that I need to read within a month of receiving them. Then I also need to read some books that um, that are for the Around the World in 80 Days readathon. So this coming week, the first week of February, we are going to be in Egypt. And for that, I am reading Egypt's Golden Couple by John and Colleen Darnell. I'm really excited to get this. I did receive this for Christmas, but because I specifically wanted to save it for this readathon, I didn't force myself to read it in January. And then The Untold Story of Tutankhamun by Thomas Hobing. So this one is for my physical TBR and this one I received for Christmas. So. Then the second week of February, we are going to be in India for that readathon. So I'm definitely trying to read the Bhagavad Gita. And if I get through that, I'm going to read the autobiography of a yogi, both of which are rather um, long books. So I really doubt I will get through both of them, but we'll, we'll see. And then the third week uh, would be in China. And for that, I have the Pavilion of Woman by, Women by Pearl S. Buck. And then I have Tang Dynasty Stories. Um, I probably should be able to get through both of these, hopefully, because they're relatively short. And I think um, that should be all the like full weeks I should get through in the readathon. Um, but just in case we do travel to Japan at the very end of February, um, I do have The Rising Sun by John, John Tulland, uh, which is about Japan, and then um, The Origins of the Oriental Civilization. So all those books that I will be reading, I will be reading for that readathon specifically. And for the rest of the books that I will pick out from my physical TBR to read this month, I haven't picked out anything. I'm just going to like mood read whatever I feel like. Um, I do want to try to tackle a big anthology because I do have quite a few big anthologies that I need to tackle this year. Uh, but for the most part, those are all the books that I'm hoping to read in February. Um, now looking at them, I realize just how ambitious my TBR is, but it's mostly because people keep, keep giving me books as presents. So stop it, guys. Stop it. Get some help. So have you read any of these books, whether the ones that I read in January or the ones I'm hoping to read in February? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.